going to find out the power behind the scene secret societies notice what is skull and bones illuminati masons and all them groups they have one master notice the new world order it's almost complete notice but unfortunate friends if you don't understand their final goal you're going to be doomed but the good news is if you know their final goal you can escape what's about to happen sometimes some people will show you some of the secret societies but unfortunately they don't tell you the power behind the scene and the whole world afraid because they don't know what to do today you're going to find out watch the whole video at the Vatican today, a warm greeting for President Obama from Pope Benedict the 16th. It's a great honor for you. Thank you so much. I'm also going to start with a mark of the beast that they already have in White House. So be more patient. All they have to do is enforcing their law. And the whole thing is combined with religion. A lot of facts. Yes. And it was... Uh... Successful. Successful? You have some decisions. It's not so easy. It's awesome. It's a bush. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. Pope Benedict XVI is calling for a new world financial order. The document, entitled Charity and Truth, was released just hours before the G8 summit. Friends, what you are about to witness is the truth says jesus ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free friends have you ever heard the word or the term all road leads to rome when a michael jackson died and it seemed like the whole world they were so busy watching his program notice was the time that rome pope he issued this law because they try to deceive the whole world because Rome are the same power that they set up the Jesuit order. Notice the Jesuit order was created during 1500s. And then the Jesuit, they also create Masons. And now they have a lot of groups. But notice the reason they create the Jesuit order is to destroy the Protestant. Notice the Reformation. Protestants or the Protestants are the Sunday churches. They are forefathers because they used to protest against Rome during dark ages. They used to go by Bible and Bible only. And then Rome, they go by human power, human authority. And they tell them if they don't accept their human rules, they're going to torture, they're going to persecute them. Friends, the Jesuit order also infiltrate politics they the one they take leadership in every countries they set their own president in every countries they also create democracy and united nation how they can finish the new world order and if your president don't submit to their rules and give their power to them they will pretend like you have a new weapons and they will take you they will set another president that will submit to their rules so that they can finish the new world order when our founders declared a new order of the ages they were acting on an ancient hope that is meant to be fulfilled friends the jesuit order they also infiltrate every religion especially Sunday churches. That's why Revelation chapter 17 called this power whore. Notice the mother of Harlot. Jesus Christ is the one who died for the whole world and he's drawn everybody to himself. But this power, they don't want you to go to Jesus Christ. They want you to go to them and confess your sin to them. So notice what Revelation chapter 18 says. Notice, and they also infiltrate the kings president so notice and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying babylon the great is fallen and is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the whole of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird for all nations have drunk of the wine of her fornications and notice and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her Friends, now I'm going to tell you their mark. Notice this power. 
the mark of the beast because notice if the Bible says the mark of the beast means this power has a mark the beast is a language that God is using for this power and they themselves they says in their own book the book of Catechism the old version notice they says Sunday worship is their mark of authority the new version they don't use the word authority but at least thank God they still admit it even the new version of Catechism they still says they changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. Friends, according to history, we know that Constantine was the one who changed God's holy law. The holy law in Ten Commandments, notice the Fourth Commandment says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And Constantine changed it from 321 AD and it's so sad that a lot of Sunday churches, notice the first day churches, some of them don't know, but a lot of them, they adopt the Sunday worship for so many years and it's a pagan sun worship day. Sunday worship. Daniel chapter 7 verse 25. The Bible help us to understand that this power will change times and law. They change the law of God. The only law that it has a relationship with God and mankind. And they also change times. Because the Bible begins by saying the first day of the week, the second day of the week, the third day of the week, up to the seventh day of the week. Friends, the biblical Sabbath is always Saturday because the Bible says the seventh day is the Sabbath. Sunday is the first day of the week. And just in case you don't know, look your calendar. You're going to find out that the Sunday is always begin as the first day of the week. God knows that in the end, the devil's going to make the whole world to worship him. That's why it says in Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. He deceives the whole world. And notice what it says. In Revelation chapter 13. Notice at this time. Chapter 13 verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose name are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the earth friends if everybody's gonna go to church on saturday and worship god friends you know what's gonna happen nobody's gonna say we came from chickens monkeys and alligators because whenever that day comes if they obey it they're not gonna say they are atheists because they will know that there is a god who created heaven and the earth this is what's going to play in the last days. Because the mark of the beast, the worship issue in Revelation chapter 13. If you get time, read it. Because Revelation chapter 13 verse 12. It's a worship issue. And verse 15, it's a worship issue. And verse 8 is a worship issue. And the Bible helps us to understand that behind the scene, Revelation 13 is the devil. He wants the whole world to worship him. Friends, you have to escape. You have to study your Bible. Christ is calling you. Whether you are Christian or not, whenever you hear Sunday worship in any countries, do not accept it. God is going to protect you. Bible says our bread and water will be short. Your Holiness, on behalf of all of us gathered here today, indeed on behalf of all the people of our beloved nation, we welcome you back to America. Friends, Vatican Second, 1960s, notice, the Vatican, they send their Jesuit order again, and they infiltrate all the churches, especially Sunday churches, and that's why they bring in all kinds of rock and roll, so-called gospel, in their churches, and notice, and also rap, so-called gospel, in their churches. Their goal is to destroy their churches. And now you see all kinds of unholy traffic. And they also destroy their doctrines because they don't want them to protest against them. Because they understand that according to Revelation chapter 13, whenever they enforce their sun worship day, notice they are pagan sun worship day, people's going to protest against Christians. 
So now they're telling them that the church is going to be caught up to heaven and then somebody else is going to go through tribulation. But Paul says, Yea, whosoever shall live in godly shall suffer persecution. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, notice in Daniel chapter 3, when they throw them in the fire furnace, you know what happened? God saved them. And according to Daniel chapter 6, King Darius, when they throw Daniel in the lion's den, God saved Daniel. God helped us to understand that he has the power to stop pain and he's in control. And according to Daniel chapter 12 verse 1, Bible says God's people shall be delivered. Notice, in the time of trouble such as never was. So you don't have to fear mankind. Do not accept that satanic doctrine or gospel so to speak. It's coming from the 